Start by wrapping one end of the fuse around one of the bomb terminal prongs without touching the fuse or anything else inside the bomb. Now, connect the other end of the fuse to the other terminal in the same fashion. Again, not touching it. Using the Allen wrench, create four loops in the fuse. Be careful to not allow the wires to cross. If the wires do cross or touch, use tweezers to correct the issue. Try to even out the spacing of the loops while loosening the fuse from the Allen wrench. Begin to slide the wrench out. This is what a properly wrapped fuse wire looks like. Position the pellet saucer cradle underneath the terminal prongs. It only rotates freely in one direction. Work the wire cradle up or down, adjusting the height to the appropriate location. Position the saucer on the support cradle wire. Place the pelleted sample onto the saucer. Putting it on its side allows for the most area to contact the fuse. A minimum of three loops of fuse wire must be in contact with the sample. Check this from various angles. Putting the fuse in contact with the sample appropriately will hold the sample in place. Shake the bomb gently to confirm. I mean, it's not sitting on top, but it's on there. We have a sample. It might break, like stand off, but mm -hmm. the benzoic acid holds together well. But and again, if it is, then you can put it on the side. Um, nice. Yeah, I always give it the little because when you're putting it in, you still want to be careful because you can't see it. You know, when you're putting the lid on and stuff, but because mm -hmm. that's usually how you have a misfire. Because and you won't know till later after ten minutes will be a misfire and then you open up and the sample's sitting on the bottom of the pan of the bottom.